Today, we're going to take a look at three New York Rangers players who have been involved in legit trade talks slash trade rumors. And we've also got one player here who kind of has just been more kind of talked about amongst Rangers fans and possibly being traded as well. So I'll give you all my opinion on these three players and kind of whether or not I think they should be traded and just kind of my thoughts on this whole kind of situation around these certain players and kind of what could transpire going forward in the future as well as kind of right now and how they've been playing and kind of all of that good stuff involving these three New York Rangers players who are you know some of these guys especially are pretty key players as well so let's dive right into it here starting off with the first player we're going to talk about in today's video and that is Ryan Lindgren the heart and soul player for this New York Rangers team he may not be the best player to ever play hockey but boy does he ever give it 110% when he's out there on the ice I think he is a great just kind of effort guy to have out there you know is he a true let's say number two defenseman I wouldn't quite say that, but I do think he is a top four caliber guy and truly is someone who just gives it everything he's got every time he's out there on the ice, whether it's going to lay a body, you know, sticking up for teammates, blocking a shot, getting smacked in the face with a stick out there, getting some stitches, you know, getting stitched up there, getting cleaned up a bit there, and he's back on the ice the next shift there. He's just one of those kind of guys. So having him on this team is phenomenal. And there have been a few talks amongst Rangers fans mainly about possibly seeing him traded away as he is, you know, a guy who will be an unrestricted free agent this upcoming summer, this upcoming off season. So he meaning he can pretty much sign with any team he wants to in free agency, which obviously will make it a lot tougher for this New York Rangers team to bring him back. And with the emergence of a guy like Victor Mancini and this team having Chad Ruedel and some other pretty solid kind of depth guys in the AHL as well. It does make a bit of sense on kind of why this New York Rangers team might possibly want to cash in on an asset or two to get, you know, Ryan Lindgren off the team here because he's probably going to leave in a agency. And it does make a bit of sense there to all if you trade him away. But personally, I don't really want to see him traded away. And I don't think it's necessarily going to happen now. Would it be nice to get a decent prospect and a decent draft pick? Absolutely. But it also is nice to have a guy like Ryan Lindgren back there who is, you know, that tough player. Gives, you know, obviously not the best puck mover, but defensively, it for the most part, is pretty sound. Has the all just really great offensive moment here and there. I mean, he doesn't have a great one every single week or every five games or so, but once in a while, Lindgren will have that just random, really nice play offensively, whether it's, you know, scoring a goal or making a nice pass, whatever it is, he does have the odd great offensive moment here and there. So he is a guy who will contribute the odd time offensively, be a pretty solid, reliable defensive defenseman. And the puck moving is a bit of an issue at moments with Lindgren. But other than that, he is a really solid guy to have on your team. And he seems like a pretty great guy to have in the locker room as well. So I got to imagine it wouldn't be the overall best thing for morale. Maybe in the locker room, seeing a guy like that traded away. But obviously, at the end of the day, it is still a business. So things happen like that all the time. But seeing a guy like Lindgren stay on this team and then just leaving for agency for nothing, I'm not going to be too upset about. Obviously, I would love to see him stay with this team for a long while. But with the cap situation and how things are going to transpire going forward in the future, with you know Alexi Lafreniere already signing his massive contract, he's you know making about like $5 million more than what he's kind of making right now. So that's an extra $5 million on the cap bit for next season. Then you always take into account, you know, a guy like Igor Shosturkin, him presumably getting that massive extension or contract at some point in the near future as well. He's going to be getting paid a ton more money. So I don't see how we can really fit Lingren back onto this team cap-wise. And as of right now, I really don't see him being traded away, but definitely comment down below your thoughts on this whole situation with Ryan Lindgren there. Do you think he's going to leave him for agency? And also, do you think he's going to get traded? And do you want to see him traded away at some point before this upcoming offseason where he'll probably sign with some other team in unrestricted free agency? And this past offseason, we also did see the New York Rangers current captain, Jacob Truba, involved in seemingly quite a bit of of trade talks slash rumors. Now, obviously, a deal did not end up getting done, but it did seem like the Rangers were in pretty deep talks there with the Detroit Red Wings, potentially. There were some rumors kind of floating around. Obviously, that deal was pretty much done or almost done. Obviously, things didn't fall through for maybe some personal reasons, we'll say, for Jacob Truba. Not going to dive too deep into that, but that's kind of seemingly what happened there where a deal didn't go through, seemingly because of what Jacob Truba possibly wanted. That was kind of the rumors slash reports. He obviously stayed on this team, and it seems like this upcoming offseason, though, we could possibly see those trade talks come back around as he'll be entering the final season of his massive contract where he does earn around $8 million on average per season, which for a guy of his caliber is obviously not a great contract. He has not lived up to near the expectations 
of a player who's obviously making an $8 million cap bid, but I would definitely say he is improved from last season, which is is good to see. I mean, obviously, he's nowhere near still worth that $8 million cap hit, but he definitely does seem like he's playing better so far this season compared to last season, which is nice. I think there definitely is a fairly realistic chance we could see him traded away, but if it's going to happen, it's going to happen, in my opinion, this upcoming offseason in 2025, that summer where... You know, I don't think it's going to happen at the deadline or before that. I just don't see that happening. I don't think it's very realistic to see, you know, an $8 million player who's the captain of this New York Rangers team traded away midseason. I could be wrong. Maybe it does happen and I wouldn't, you know, be too upset if that happened. But I just think if it's going to happen, if a deal is going to get done there, it's probably going to happen this upcoming summer. So we'll have to wait and see whether or not he does actually end up getting moved. But I would imagine if he does, it's going to happen at some point in the future, not fairly soon but obviously this is still a guy who will hopefully be a decent contributor on that you know for the most part kind of you know bottom pairing obviously ideally for this Rangers team and hopefully can just be a kind of non-liability out there be a solid leader still bring that physicality that we definitely know this team can use I mean that is the one thing that he definitely still has that is a big asset to this team it's that physicality and that toughness ability that that fear factor that he can bring on the ice there which you know, this team doesn't have a lot of LVC guys like Will Cooley, Matt Rempe. They can lay the body a bit there. Rempe can fight a bit. Edstrom can fight a bit. You know, Sam Carrick's got some grit to him as well. We have some of those grittier type players, but we don't have a guy like Jacob Truman necessarily who is that, you know, really tough, big, big hitter. I mean, obviously Rempe can do that as well, but he's not an everyday kind of guy in the lineup, whereas Jacob Truba is in there pretty much every single game when he's healthy. And for the most part, this season obviously hasn't been great, but definitely has not been near as bad as last season and not quite as much of a liability, which is great to see. And he definitely still does have some good things to bring to this team, just obviously not worth $8 million. And now we've got the former second overall pick, Capo Caco, who was kind of in some trade talk slash rumors, it seemed like, this past offseason where the Rangers seemingly kind of floated him out there to see kind of what offers they could possibly get in return. Obviously, they didn't get a good enough offer because they would have accepted one if they did. So he stayed on this team. He ended up signing that one-year, $2.4 million contract back in June. And, you know, so far this season, he definitely, kind of like true, but has looked better. Now, has all this Kako been that second overall pick kind of guy? No, but has he been much improved, I would say, from last season, or at least a bit improved? You could definitely say that. I think he's been a big part of this amazing New York Rangers third line made up of Will Cooley, Philip Heedle, and Capo Kako, which is great to see. I mean, having three lines out there that you can pretty much roll straight through, you know, three lines there is phenomenal to see. And you can honestly say that this third line has really been more like this team's second best line off of the forward side of things there over that, you know, Kreider's advantage at a and Smith line. You could argue that as well. So this line has been phenomenal. Capo Caco has been a big part of that. He's put up some pretty solid point totals so far and, you know, could possibly end up having a career year alongside guys like Philip Hedl and Will Cooley, who seemingly also could have some career years as well, especially Will Cooley there, who is off to a phenomenal start, especially offensively. We know he's got that decent defensive game, and you know, I can talk too much about Cooley there, but I am a big, big fan of Cooley. He did and Kako. That third line has been phenomenal, but especially Cooley there. I just really like that player on the third line. And getting back to Kako, though, I think he's going to be a part of this team, hopefully, kind of long-term wise. We'll see kind of what happens, and it is kind of tough to really kind of gauge the kind of future of this team because for the third line there, you have a guy like Brent Nothman, Brett Berard, and some other prospects in the AHL and in the system as well who – and you're seemingly going to be looking for spots in the future as well. You have a guy like Gabe Pro, who this will probably end up being his last season at college. Now, does he make the team out of camp? You know, that's a possibility as well. I mean, in 2025, 2026, I'm talking about, you know, does he make the team out of camp there? It's possible. So that can obviously push guys down the depth chart there and really kind of kind of make a kind of log jam there in that kind of top nine of the New York Rangers where you have a guy like Will Cooley, Kako, Offman, Berard, Perot, then you got, you know, obviously Riley Smith, who will probably be gone, which will open up a spot, you know, this upcoming offseason as he does only have, you know, one-year contract left. So he will be a free agent. He'll probably end up leaving, I'd imagine. But there's going to be a bit of a logjam there with a ton of top nine caliber forwards seemingly for next season where does a guy, Kako, as he is, you know, have a, on a one-year contract right now, he will be an RFA or a shifted free agent with arbitration eligibility. You know, does he end up getting moved away this offseason if he does have a good enough season where the Rangers get a decent offer back in return whether it is a you know solid draft pick or a prospect or one of each you know we'll have to wait and see I'll be interested to see kind of what happens and you know do they want to save a bit of a bit of money there as well because he's right now making 2.4 million 
if he continues to have a pretty solid season and finishes, you know, around that 40, 50 point mark, he will probably want a maybe bit of a longer term deal possibly. I think it would make more sense for him to probably go for a shorter term deal, maybe a one or two year deal to try and really improve himself again. We'll have to wait and see kind of what would happen and what Kako kind of wants, obviously. But he doesn't have a lot of leverage there, which does help the Rangers as he is on an RFA, but he does have arbitration eligibility, meaning he can kind of go to a middleman there who can kind of help sort out that deal between the Rangers and Kako, which can kind of help with the player sometimes as well to kind of get more of what they want or obviously what the team wants as well. It kind of depends all of his weak sides kind of wanting that contract to be. But my point is, you know, with all the players and prospects we have coming up as well, do I see Kako getting traded away, you know, at the deadline, let's say? No. But could he get traded away this upcoming offseason? I do think it is a possibility, even if he plays great. I think with all the young guys we have coming up there and the cap crunch we're going to kind of get into the next couple seasons here, moving off a guy like Kako, getting some assets back, whether it's prospects or picks, which we definitely could use more picks because we obviously have no second rounders for, you know, the next couple of years here. We're out of some other picks as well. So getting another pick or two would not be a bad thing, but losing a guy like Kako would hurt this team a bit. So we'll have to wait and see, but we do have so many great young guys coming up who are pretty much NHL already who could fit into that kind of third line role, especially if a guy like Gabe Perot can prove himself enough to be willing to, you know, make the NHL team right at training camp. That will really have a, a big kind of impact on kind of what we could possibly see happen with Capo Kako, depending on kind of what the Rangers envision for guys like Berard, Othman, and Gabe Perot going forward, especially. Anyways, though, definitely comment down below your thoughts. I know I kind of went over a ton in this video about Capo Kako, obviously Ryan Lindgren and Jacob Truba, but definitely comment down below your thoughts on these two players. Who do you think is going to get moved? What do you think we get back in return for these guys? And just let me know your thoughts on this kind of situation involving all three of these guys. I think it's very interesting. I mean, a guy like Kako, he's playing good, but he so could end up getting moved because of the cap situation and the players that we have coming up in the future as well. So it's going to be interesting here. We have some good young talent, but obviously... The ultimate end goal is to win that Stanley Cup and Chris Drury and this front office and the coaching staff have to pick the right players to get the job done. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next one and let's go Rangers.